night tonight we have a special guest of course you know jennifer and i and mm -hmm. uh we are ready for a cco live if you're new this is i think like 23rd that we've been doing this and yeah. We got the date right this time because here lately I've been forgetting <laughs> to change the date at the top and I noticed that it had said the 13th, I think, is uh, we didn't get to do one last week because I was supposed to be out of town and that kind of fell through. But uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to go to Johnson City, Tennessee. They had a hundred people there. It was sounded like it was great. All of, uh, Sharon Oliver did the presentation on ICD-10 2020. But we're here tonight with Don Self. Some of you may know Don. If you know Don, put in the chat that you know Don and how you know Don. Don Self's website is donself.com. Pretty easy <laughs> to remember, right, Don? But yes, ma'am. He is a specialist with uh, billing. Uh, but he comes at it from a diff different perspective. He's educating the providers, helping them um, learn the uh, how they're not going to lose revenue. And before I forget, before we get too far in this, if you guys hear my grandchildren, um, all six of my children are under the roof right now or here for Thanksgiving. They just all showed up. And all seven of my grandchildren are here. So wow. I can hear one of the babies like this big. <laughs> yeah, and two the two youngest are um, like two two months apart, and they're like one is three months old, and the other's like five six months old. So, there. Anyway, um, this is the information on Don from his website. Uh, what I'd like for you to do is make a note of that because he has a fabulous website that is a resource for things like NCCI, not only for the providers, but you, if you're a coder or anybody that's dealing with revenue is gonna benefit from this knowledge. I was just telling Don, I said, this isn't something we really talk about when people take a coding course. And you know, we tell them, yeah, there's NCCI edits, but we don't, it's not something they really test you on. They may give you a question or two, but um, so let me quit talking about Don and let Don talk about himself for just a minute. How's that? Don, what do you want to tell us about you? Uh, just that I've been doing this for about 34 years. Um, on the website, it does have all kinds of free stuff, and we've even got some free webinars on there for free C, uh, CEUs. Yeah, but I'm just here to help anytime I can help, and I feel honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. This is this is his website real quick. Let me see if I can get uh, – I've got my son's crazy mouse on here. There's uh, – that's a schedule. He just started Tuesday night webinars, and his is right after our Tuesday night webinar. Uh, and this picture is Don and his lovely wife. I don't know if it's going to show up for you. There you go. So, anyway, you can go on there and get – more information. So again, it's not just NCCI edits. Tell them some other things that you guys do. Or you well, one of the about. big things I teach, I teach about is e &M coding. Uh, I'm real big on that. Uh, increasing primary care doctor's income by identifying what they're missing and not billing. Uh, typically, the average family physician is missing anywhere from $120,000 to $240,000 a year. And that's even if they have certified coders, they're still missing it. I guarantee you nine out of 10 doctor consults I do, I identify that amount. I teach about ERISA also because I feel like billers and coders, or at least billers do, need to know ERISA, which is a 1974 law that makes insurance carriers pay you even when they don't want to. And that law can stop insurance carriers from recouping from the practices also. Uh, that override that law overrides any contracts that the doctors or hospitals might have been dumb enough to sign with the insurance carriers. Mm -hmm. And as you already, you will figure out if you haven't already. I'm very politically incorrect. I say things that I'm thinking, <laughs> and that can be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true, you guys. And and I told Don uh, that yeah, because Jennifer, I mean, w this is our casual night. We do. We were telling on what nights we do webinars and stuff and both um jennifer's teaching at a college now and you know they they kind of tie your hands when you 
do things like that. You know, Don mm -hmm. doesn't, he doesn't have to do that. He's, and, and I even made him go get his cowboy hat because he didn't have it on. And it's like, I'm not used to seeing him without his cowboy hat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that shirt really, really shows the, the confidence in being a medical professional, right? <laughs> Good man. <laughs> or, um, <laughs> <laughs> Arissa was something, the first lecture that I got to listen to Don on, you were talking about Arissa and, and I had no idea what it was. And I was taking notes all over the place that that was in, I think that was in Houston, wasn't it? Might have been because I've, I've done these, I've Houston. done about 600 seminars around the country. In fact, I'm doing Arissa next Tuesday night again. Mm -hmm. And so his webinar is right after the CCO uh, student or club webinar. So if some of you are, you know, frequent flyers to that webinar that we do, uh, uh, then absolutely, you know, just just tune in with his and stuff. Um, Jennifer, I, I told them that they know much more about NCCI than I do and, um, because billing, unfortunately, is not my expertise. And so they're going to do more of the talking after I shut up. And I'll go in and start pulling questions off of YouTube and, and stuff. But I wanted to talk about this next slide. And maybe Jennifer can talk about it. I highlighted the stuff that I felt was important. But um, what do you think? Jennifer, do you kind of want to explain them what that is? Well, I'm going to try to get my YouTube up to answer questions. Well, I don't like to read directly from slides um, because you guys all know how to read. Um, the Some of the basis of how payments come in, or I don't want to word this incorrectly, um, the payments that you should correctly receive we need to review these NCCI edits. Um, when I got into billing and, you know, before I even, I knew coding, and then I got into billing in a different part of the office, and it's like, oh, okay, you know, and then somebody was like, well, those two don't go together, I mean, you know, and you get this EOB and you go, what do you mean they don't go together? He did this and he did that, so why don't they go together? And then you start to learn, oh, what is NCCI? They're saying it's for this, and then, you know, you start Googling and start looking things up. So um, kind of learn it the hard way, especially in orthopedics, where they have a lot of NCCI edits uh, for a lot of different uh, procedures that cannot be form performed together. So it's a tool that is used to determine correct coding, and that's what it stands for. Now, when I first started, this was not online. These were in books that you got every quarter, and, <laughs> and um, I, got, I grew a little hand out of, out of the side. That's my <laughs> hand. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so... Um, you know, and we'd have to go back and look up these books and the, you know, it was columns and columns and columns of this very fine print and you'd have your major code and then they'd have, it's kind of like each in a box and they'd say, okay, two, three, five, fifty, and they'd say, okay, it can't go with this, 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 and then they'd have a little number next to it, a little subterm to say, that's acceptable in cases with a modifier to let you know it's acceptable. So. When I first learned this, we'd had to go to those books. And then in my work, stopped buying the books or getting the books. And I was like, oh my gosh, what happened? I lived out of those books. So, <laughs> so then, um, then, but now everything's online and a huge spreadsheet off of the CMS website. So it is a tool in to determine correct coding because um, we always hear that term, you know, that's inclusive. Well, what do you mean it's inclusive? So it gets a, a little bit more into the codes as to what can be put together. And that's how the reimbursement comes back from the insurance carriers. That's the methodology that they used. So I'm sure I probably skipped something there that probably Don can <laughs> mention about. Well, you did great on that. One thing I would like to add is at times, some procedures are not separately billable in relation to another procedure done at the same day. And the NCCI edits will identify which procedure that is. I thought I'd put a little bit more light here on this for you guys so you can actually see my hat. There you go. <laughs> uh, 
as an example, I'll give you an example if I may. A lot of times doctors will have a nurse do an ear irrigation to try to get the earwax out, impacted earwax. And that's a 69209 if the MA or the nurse does that per ear, by the way. And then the doctor may come in afterwards and say, you didn't get all the wax out. I have to go in there with a tool. So the doctor may go in there with a curette, a spoon, a barbecue tongs, whatever it is, or reaching into the ear to pull it out with. And then the doctor says, well, what can I build? Well, if you go to the NCCI edits, you see that a 69210 for going in with a curette, a spoon, or whatever tool is separately billable on the same day as the 69209 irrigation if it has the right modifier. But I would say nine out of 10 doctors and billing staff I talk to are not aware that you can bill both of those on the same day. Mm -hmm. The NCCI edits are used to educate us to what we can do, not just what we can't do. Right. I, one of the things that I learned and this is because I'm working with some pro fee stuff and I have my little notes here. Uh, I won't show you which doctor it is, but one of the things the ENT does is, you know, they've got a little instrument that they stick in the ear, uh, the, uh, that that's your tympanic membrane, you know, and it's called a tympan tympanometry or something. That's nine, two, five, six, seven, but you cannot code, um, no, no, no. It was 92504, the binoculars, the uh, microscopic binoculars. You can't code that with 69210 at the same time because it's an NCCI edit. And then there was another one that said you couldn't do the 31575 for the laryngeal scope, you know, to go in and look the back of the throat with uh, another scope that which was a nasoesophagus one and then they said well no you can do those if you use a modifier and they and so all of this stuff is something that is repetitive because first of all if you have anything that the provider thinks if he's an ENT he's going to use uh, check those eardrums right but ear cleaning out you know you got to uh, very, very careful how you do that. You don't flush and, you, you know, they can't, the provider, um, it's kind of like you always code to the highest specificity, right? And that's important to remember. Uh, but heads up, Medicare will not pay for cleaning out the cerumen of the ear uh, via, with that pick. And if, uh, for cerumen impaction, if it's not documented that the ear has got an impaction, if it doesn't have that word, mm -hmm. I found that out the other day because uh, when I had it, you know, was doing an audit and they said, well, it's Medicare and it, nowhere in the note did he state that it was impacted. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, you know, <laughs> so these are just little things you learn along the way. Sorry about that. Um, Good, good. Thank and I think that they that. are all little things you learn along the way. I mean, w even as an instructor in the school, we talked about NCCI edits when we talked about payment methodologies. And right. it's like, until you're actually doing it, though, it still doesn't seem to make sense. They, oh, that's something out there that I can look up on this website or whatever. But until you're actually maybe get that denial back or review those codes, do some kind of audit or have some kind of training or have somebody come back and say, you could have built that. And you're like, wait a minute, what do you mean? And then you go, oh yeah, there's those NCCI edits, you know, or <laughs> a lot of times we get questions in the um, chat or in the forums, well, can you build these two things together? And then they kind of want to know why, or how can I build them together? Or why can't I build them together? And the answer is usually, well, if you look up the NCCI edit, it says <laughs> you can build this and that along with the proper modifier or something like that. So, and um, like Jennifer said, it's not difficult to, to figure out how to read those either. It is super easy once you go in. I use the NCCI edit on find a code. I mean, that's the encoder that I use the most. Uh, uh, and so every encoder probably has one, you know, you maybe have to pay extra, I don't know, but uh, it's it's on there and you can just use that tool. Um, plus, I know Don last night when he was doing his webinar, he was showing, I don't, I don't know which encoder you use, but he had a scrubber. Mm. I Yours, use mine. 
You could share, well, that's even easier. I created it. <laughs> and so I was looking at this like, okay, he was scrubbing these claims. And that's exactly what it was doing. It said, okay, you know, you put in the code, you put, you make sure your diagnosis match or whatever. But uh, someone had asked him about, you know, well, what happens when you have like three procedures or four procedures? So he pulled out like four and put them in there. And then it tells you. And usually it is some type of an NCCI that says, no, you can't use these or you can do this or that diagnosis doesn't go with it. So like Jennifer said, you don't have to have this stuff in your brain. You don't, you know, we aren't meant to memorize this stuff. Now, if you're working with just an ENT and that's all you do, yeah, you're you're going to have those pretty memorized <laughs> quickly. But, well, but yeah, and when I pull up the website, I only did the 20,000 range. Because yeah, for early, did we even use the 60,000 range in our office because we didn't do a lot of the neurological lumbar procedures or a lot of neurological procedures. On. But we just did straight bone muscle orthopedics. So mm -hmm. I pretty much had that 20,000 spreadsheet <laughs> from Medicare. <laughs> you know, that, that one we knew quite well. So I'd like to oh. add something else, if I may, regarding the NCCI edits. Uh, some people watching this may not realize that NCCI is not the only edits out there. Mm. Some clearing houses will use other edits. For instance, uh, some clearing houses use something called the McKesson edits. Mm -hmm. And they will have different edits than the NCCI. And mm -hmm. that can be dangerous if the doctor's staff is not aware of it. And I'll give you a perfect example, if I may, and that is. If a doctor does a CBC, 85025 or 85027, that is done with blood to a venipuncture, almost always a venipuncture. It can be done sometimes in 85027 with finger stick, but let's say it's finger stick, a, a venipuncture, 36415. So the doctor's office bills for the office visit or bills for the CBC, 85025, and then the next line item is a 36415 for the venipuncture. And then when the EOB comes back, they look at the EOB and they see payment for the 85025, but they don't see the 36415 there. Some people, especially the people who really don't care, will just, oh, I guess they didn't pay for it and just go along their way. Mm -hmm. The inquisitive person in the, into that category falls the doctor's wife because the money coming in <laughs> helps pay her bills. <laughs> We'll sit there and say, hey, where is my 36415? I expect my $5 payment. Where is it? Or well, whatever it is. And go back to the carrier. And if they do go back to the carrier, the carrier says, well, we never got the claim for a 36415 because the clearinghouse took it off the claim before it ever got to the carrier. Mm -hmm. So the carrier never saw it. Had they seen it, most carriers would have paid for it, but they didn't see it. And you sit there and say, well, why would they have edits like that? Well, the McKesson edits come from the McKesson Corporation. Interestingly, United Healthcare owns McKesson. <laughs> Have you ever heard the expression fox guarding the hen house? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you multiply that three, six, four, and five and say oh, it's five dollars. Yeah. How many times in a day around the nation are yeah. doctors billing out for doing that? And it's being dropped. So the insurance carrier, not just United Healthcare, right. but all the others, on how many millions of dollars a day? Mm -hmm. Dollars add up. Yeah, right. And you know what? Uh, an yeah, well, interesting to think about. something that I caught last night, and and it leads into what you were saying. And maybe you, uh, I honestly think that ICT10 PCS will take over CPT. It's a better code set than CPT. And I, you know, you've heard me say that and everything. But then I thought, well, you know, what are they going to do about things like NCCI and stuff? Because Medicare does the NCCI edits and, and, and these would be different procedure codes and everything. And, and, um, and we know the AMA owns, you know, the uh, uh, CPT. But like he said, there's other organizations out there and, and companies that have their own. So it's not like the monopoly is on the edits. The monopoly is just on the codes. 
<laughs> but anyway, that's a completely different topic to talk about someday, maybe. But you know, for um, well, considering we need uniform code set, <laughs> they all have to be the same. We yeah. could, you know, different people run the software programs, but we have to use the same codes. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Can everybody remember back whenever they were talking about Hippo is going to basically universally make everything the same. I don't know, because I, yeah. I, how long have you been in this business, Jennifer? 27 years. 27. Yep. So, yeah. And it's a big year when we went, went back, whenever we started with the RVEs, mm -hmm. 1992. Well, I remember <laughs> that. Yeah. A lot I, of changes since then. That, that was... Um, I was I was in the medical field at that time, but it was not this world. <laughs> it was more clinical okay. stuff and, and yeah. everything. So that was that was I heard it discussed, but it wasn't my field. So, um, uh, but I do remember one of the ladies telling me that uh, was one of my mentors in coding and everything, and she remembers the coding manuals being in the like the dot. Uh, the dots, the, the dot system, or whatever, and you had the whole, the old with the perforated edges, you know, like and that's the, how you yeah, looked up dot codes. matrix kind of thing. Dot yeah. matrix, yeah. yeah. She said, "No, we didn't have manuals. We had this great big." <laughs> like, oh my! <laughs> I'm glad I was a coder back then. And a big wide paper too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these new people are like, "What are you? What are you talking about?" You know, my children have never seen that paper. <laughs> I think our claims still ran on dot matrix paper up until six years ago, maybe. Really? And then they finally got them to go to laser. Yeah, I guess it was just something in the, well, we used to, we used to actually be in a DOS program too, up until we merged corporations. So yeah. our whole practice management system was a DOS based system. We didn't have windows. So <laughs> um, yeah, it was old and ancient. And now right before I left, last month i was probably one of the few people who actually knew how to run it so <laughs> so now i think they have two people left who have to have to come do some old audit or something in the old system probably only two people know how to even use it so. the dos has yeah. definitely gone the way of morse code it's all in the past Mm. Yeah, yeah. Now oh, they yeah. make jewelry in Morse code. I was saw <laughs> I saw this something, and and they were saying Morse code jewelry, and what it was was these little dots and dashes, <laughs> necklace, and it could say like Lo I, I love one. you, and I'll, do I you? you? Yeah, yeah. My I son gave like, it to me one year for Christmas. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> I would love to see it because that's what I did in the Navy was intercept Russian and Chinese Morse code. And oh, that's awesome! So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you you know <laughs> i just got to thinking this you went from doing one type of code to another type of code you mentioned that last night too, did you to the navy and Guernsey, director of national security agency for 12 years and now i try to break into the medicare code <laughs> yeah <laughs> big government all around my now i know that my son that's behind me that's about to turn 18 i know he knows what dos is because He's into the computer stuff, but I think he only knows of it as a meme, you know, memes about <laughs> making fun of it. He does not know anything else about it. Um, well, um, that's like use the word floppy disk, and they have no idea what those were. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> floppy or hard you know i remember the the floppy yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, they, now you don't even have the the disk drives on your computer i don't even right? have a dvd drive on my computer now uh -oh. oh, no nope, wow. you're missing you out get, on that yeah because it's a great cup holder that <laughs> i think i still have several of my old hit hard drives that i had used back there in the 90s i just <laughs> never have gotten rid of them down here you know <laughs> They take those CDs and, and use them for things. Okay, let's see. Uh, we got Kit Kit says we use Encoder and 3M, which have built-in CC uh, edits, CCI edits. Uh, so when I do go to the CCI edits on the spreadsheet, I forgot how to work column one and two. That's a great idea. Why don't you guys tell them the difference between column one and column two? Oh, me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody? Go ahead, Jennifer. <laughs> Well, and it's so funny. I said, boy, she wants to do NCCI edits. I'm going to have to go back and look that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so column one is tip is your what do i want to say your um master no, word, your comprehensive code um your main code um, and then when you're looking for another code that's when you're going to run down this list so that's going to run on this spreadsheet you're going to look up um 36415 don's example you know and it's going to run 36415 down column one and column two is going to list all the other codes that may bump up against 36415 but Meaning then they you have might another very important the, column as well that you need to pay attention to. And that's the column indicating whether you can use a modifier um, to include both of those codes on the same data service on the same claim for the serve for the work that was those performed that day for the patient. So, so it's not just something? looking at column one, column two. You have another very important column. I believe, to look at. In, I believe in visual teaching. Yeah. Column yes. one is money code. <laughs> yes. Okay. Column yep. one is, that is money code. Bill? It's got to yeah, be okay. fake, Alicia. <laughs> it, it's it's uh, no, it's like no, my my billion dollar bill is out here. You know. But anyway. <laughs> okay. uh, but now column one is a, is, a, is a money code. Then you look to see if column two can be built on the same day and you find out by that by looking over at column five and column five has either a zero meaning that these right here cannot be built ever with a modifier a one meaning that they can be built together if you utilize the right modifier and it is appropriate or a nine that says that these right here do not interact in any way so you can build it separately and then there'll be some codes that's not listed. You'll have the first code, and you look for the second one, it's not there. That means it's totally out of the system and you can build them together. Mm -hmm. Just kind of an easy way of doing it. So zero means no, not, no, Don't no, ever. no, no, stop. One means, no. <laughs> yeah, hard stop. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, a one means, yeah, there's a possibility, but you gotta know the modifier. Now that's another thing because uh, when I was given some, um, uh, uh, an audit thing and they said well you could put that together with a modifier well then i had to go look up the modifier <laughs> so it's not all about knowing which code you also have to be aware of modifiers and that leads me to thinking something else too first of all the webinar that don did last night which i know you can get it on his website it's recorded right mm -hmm. you can go in and look at it um he has examples of that you know he's got he's showing you everything that they were just saying uh, but then I think you've got another webinar that's coming up that's going to be on modifiers, don't you, Don? Didn't you in say January, you were thinking about maybe having Barbara do it? In January, I'm going to have Barbara Kabusi do one. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. Her schedule will allow it because she does the best modifier webinar that I've ever seen. Yeah. And Laureen has a modifier webinar that we have on the website, but it's different than the what Barbara does. OK, it's from a different standpoint, I think. And so uh, it's really, really important when you're out in the real world. Now, testing is one thing. You got to know the modifiers and the basic basic understanding for testing purposes. But when you get out in the real world, real world in coding, modifiers make a difference. And so you have to be pretty savvy. Um, Kit Kit said, thank you, by the way. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> good to know. I will definitely be checking Don's website. And, and like I said, it's real easy. It's just donself.com. Uh, um, I'm not as egotistical as the website makes it look. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, years ago, I had a doctor come up to me at a convention and said, last, last year I was going to hire you, but I didn't remember what city you're in what the name of your company was i couldn't find you so i came home from that convention and told my wife we're changing the name of the company to don self i'm getting uh the donself.com website and i did because i wanted my clients to be able to find me mm -hmm. yeah it's real. it is pretty lucky because they tell you to keep your webs your boy the everything the, when we went from coding certification.org some of you guys may remember when we were to cco.us there was a big discussion as to you know what to do and simple is the best and and so don's lucky enough to have a really easy name so <laughs> i just can't get the phone number d-o-n-s-e-l-f that never worked out for me. 
<laughs> but now you got to worry about that area code. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kit Kit. You guys, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in. Um, we're on YouTube and Facebook. Now, we are live streaming on LinkedIn, and I know we have a lot of people that watch on LinkedIn, but I don't have LinkedIn up. Um, and so, uh, uh, usually Boyd is in the background and he helps us a little bit, but he is uh, uh, home alone with his children who <laughs> are needing more attention. It was, I think it has something to do with the holiday vacations for school and everything. The kids are pretty ramped up, you know, as mm -hmm. you can hear my children loving on each other out there. Um, so did you have, was there anything on Facebook that came in? Jennifer, I hadn't seen anything come in yet. No, um, let me go back and find it real quick though. Um, Susan yes. loves your wall behind you, Don. It's beautiful. <laughs> my uh, my ex daughter in law did that for me once when we were out of town. My wife and I were gone for about a month in the RV. We take long trips around the country while I'm teaching seminars. I came home and she had done this and taken pallets and taken the pallets apart and washed the wood oh, wow. and bleach and then took the wall and just did that. My whole office, including my desk and everything. It was amazing. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. I'm very nice. Yes, very, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. Very cool. I like his lamp too. Um, the uh, that's another thing we might mention too. Don does travel around and do webinars and uh, another place that you might connect. Of course, you guys know about us, CCO.us. That's why you, you know you're here and and everything. We appreciate it. But we also, coders are really big on networking. If you haven't figured that out, if you're new, that's, I mean, we network a lot. And um, uh, the other, uh, another Facebook page that might be beneficial to you, especially for education and stuff. Don, tell them about the, the I'll get the acronym, the uh, J-M-A- See. You're close. Anyway, it's the same yeah. alphabet, but it's different ABCD. letters. Yeah, I'm you thinking, what, what, what is that? Tell them about that because it's a great resource too, guys. Hey, Jobs for American Medical Coders, uh, JFAMC, has about 25,000 members nationwide. It's free. Pam Kulzar started that out uh, about three years ago, I think, and or two and a half years ago, and it's just absolutely grown all over the place. And there's different pages for coding questions. There's different pages for trying to find a job. And every bit of it is free. In fact, that's why we started the Tuesday night sessions to try to be able to give either free, like last night one was free, and the other one's a lot, $30 each for uh, CP, uh, CEU from the AAPC and AMBA. And the, uh, so the group, is all geared around trying to help each other. And it's phenomenal. And you can access it uh, by sending me an email to donself at donself.com and I will get you in contact with them or just do a, a Facebook search for JFAMC or Jobs for American Medical Coders. Right. Uh, uh, I know that I've seen lots of recruiters in there talking about jobs, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, because at CCO, we have a form that we, you know, we'll, we only post online remote jobs, uh, but we'll have recruiters contact us from time to time on LinkedIn, especially. And, they, you know, do you know somebody to be interested in XYZ job and stuff? And they're great about being upfront and telling you, mm, you know, nope. I don't think you'd be qualified for this, but you might be qualified for, you know, but it's a, a very easy going and um, it's an enjoyable uh, group to, to be involved with. So many of you are on our Facebook uh, page. We also have different pages. So think about joining that one as well and networking. Um, LinkedIn has been a lot of fun. I can't get. tell you, you know, networking is just so funny. I, I mean, uh, but a uh, girlfriend and I, I mean, we both teach at the same place and we actually both used to work for the same company. And then she left to just do teaching and then I left to just do teaching. And now she says, well, I had to go in and see one of your docs, but they couldn't get me in for another week. So I went to one of the other divisions. And while she was there, they said, hey, do you need a job? <laughs> so she's <laughs> like, oh, okay, you know, I'll come back for an interview. Well, when she went back for the interview, 
they thought it was she was coming in to work that day and she just thought it was an interview and then they're like you know i i don't think we might need more people do you know somebody and she's like i just might so, you know, we, we actually both used to work for you guys so i mean just by her going yeah i know somebody just because i you know you know somebody who knows somebody who yeah. and I, I i we did a um a career career round table at our meeting in november that's a good idea and we just kind of for people to come in and, you know, maybe we'd review your resume, have other people look over your resume. What do you think about interviewing? What do you, you know, kind of just, what kind of job do you do? Do you like it? Do you learn new things? What what kind of atmosphere is it? Things like that. So we kind of just kind of sat around and just talked about our jobs and our careers. And actually one of our members came because she owns a company. And so she wanted people, she needed new hire new people. So she's like, okay. So, and that was kind of a good, segue for her too to go oh let me see what they're like you know they're out here Good idea. Kind of casual and see kind of what they're like and and um yeah i just love i i can't say enough about the networking in our field it just it, it's very it's not competitive it's very no you know, no i mean there's plenty of jobs out there for everybody and and now that you can work remote it has really opened up uh, avenues for people in more rural areas that don't have a large hospital or clinic system around them, you know, when there was only like one doctor in town or something, you know, it's really made a difference in being able to get, get jobs, but um, yeah. Well. And you know, so, John was saying earlier, he, he helps primary care managers or primary care providers. Is that the main client you use or is that just what you find most often or? Well, I've, I've spoken to so many different state and national conventions, and it seems like I gravitate towards the family and internal medicine doctor, mm -hmm. because those are the ones I can almost always increase their income by the hundred to two hundred thousand dollar range. Yeah. With other practices, like I was talking to, I had a cardiology consult today with a practice out of Florida. Um, I probably helped him about ninety thousand uh, dollars, so it wasn't as much as the other guys. But they all make the same kind of mistakes, regardless of their specialty. Mm -hmm. One of the benefits that I have is I have every doctor's billing history on, my, on this computer I'm looking at right here. I get that out of Medicare, I download it, I put it into FileMaker Pro and put it into a format I can use. So I can pull up and I find that almost every doctor is making the same kind of mistakes as every other one. And it could, could be because they're all getting the same bias from the same people. Yeah. <laughs> it might be the associations. For instance, uh, several national associations are telling doctors, you don't make any money with Medicare, you make more money with commercial insurance. Well, that may be true with some specialties like a vascular surgeon, but it's definitely just the opposite of being true for family practice or internal oh, medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Medicare <laughs> patients are by far much more profitable. As an example, if Family physicians should be making around fourteen to sixteen hundred dollars a year per every Medicare patient. Mm -hmm. That's not what they're doing right now. Most of them are averaging two hundred to three hundred and twenty because they're not capturing what they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of approach that I and why I've centered in on family and internal medicine doctors and why I'm published to those guys mostly in the different magazines. You know, and they're they're low man on the totem pole too. So to be able to find that, you know, their reimbursement rates are down here. So they need to find that additional income that they have, and and Medicare being probably fifty percent of their day, patient base at least. You know, kids probably the other fifty or so. You know, typically, I know when I worked in family practice, it was yeah, a lot of elderly. Well, yeah, your PCP see everything, right? You know, and that. So it uh, allows for a wider range of mistakes or errors. Whereas if you see somebody like a cardiologist, they're seeing the same people, you know, they're seeing that for the same thing predominantly all the time. So they're, the errors, if they're going to make them, it's very repetitious, you know, and stuff. But with family practice, my word, you know, the, mm -hmm. the stuff that I, I saw my exposure the other day to family practice, and I was like, oh, my word, you guys are amazing. How do you keep all this in your head? And the CPT codes were just like, oh, 
<laughs> yeah, they 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 can't really have a a set encounter form or something because no. they can be doing anything. Yeah, what one minute everything you're from the fruit to the brain. <laughs> That's right. It's everything. And then, you know, and then they send them off to a higher specialty if they need it. But, you know, the, the yeah, it's like one minute you're, you know, you got a, we did fish hooks the other day. You got a fish hook in your scalp or, you know, you cut your finger washing dishes. Uh, you know, some simple trauma type thing might come in or a broken arm or follow up from ERs can be anything. And, and you're all age groups because, you know, not everybody has a pediatrician. You know, yeah, right? think about where most of the major disease is initially caught. The heart disease initially caught by the primary care. The yeah. cancer was initially suspected by the primary care. That's right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, everything. That's why they have to do so many as a gatekeeper. They have to do so many referrals. Yeah. And they're getting yeah. some, typically most primary care doctors are making about on an average, I can look and see how much they get paid from Medicare is about a hundred thousand a year typically. Mm -hmm. And they should be doing yeah. around four to 500,000 a year based on 400 patients, Medicare patients. Yeah. Not that many, but and so they, what they're trying to do, they're trying to work harder and see 35 patients a day. Yeah. And I don't care who yeah. you are and whether or not you have yeah. an S on the front of your shirt, you can't do good patient care if you're trying to do 35 patients a day. Yeah, I, I remember asking, it's like, well, how many how many patients they see a day? Oh, they're really busy. They see, and everybody wants into them in there because this particular, you know, the, these couple family practice are um, good bedside manner. I want to say they're charismatic, you know, and they're very thoughtful. And yet they're trying to see as many people. They're so sought after family practice but and that explains why so many of them burn out between 48 and 52 years old you know i i went to school with a fella that he was a year younger than me and he went came back to our hometown and practices and um so he's a, so he would be 50 right now and so his wife went to school with me and um uh, 50 and 51 now you know how old i am but uh and this is when you all say oh you look good no. <laughs> well, I tell them to do it when I go to lectures. Uh, but I wonder, you know, going back to a place where you, you're you from probably makes it even worse because, oh, you know, good old boy from back home. And and um, we, in fact, I never knew him as anything but Scotty. You know, he's not. He's Dr. Griswold. <laughs> We're Dr. Scotty now. Yeah, Dr. Scotty. <laughs> and, but, you know, uh, he's, so busy my my family back home use him and and you know it's if you're not an established patient you can't hardly get in to see him and so if now there's other doctors there in the office but he's the one everybody wants to go to because and i i can see how he would burn out very quickly i'll i'll have to ask him how he's doing next time we're in town uh we kind of got off of ncci but that's okay we don't care i'm gonna look at the time real quick and see oh we're hey we're good we got yeah, 15 yeah. whole minutes guys yeah. um so uh again any questions that you have come in i'm sorry we can't access i i can't access the linkedin to to get those and we've got some great people on linkedin by the I'm way i'm on linkedin right now but Are i you? don't know what place to go to in linkedin to try to find y'all well it's our, our CCO, uh, it would be, look up the CCO, I don't know if it's just CCO or CCO.us, I don't know. Oh, you know what, let me, maybe my iPad knows, or my, uh, or uh, my computer. All of these smart things sure have made us, it's like somebody asked me my, my, my son's phone number. Um, I, don't I don't know, let me look it up here. Button. <laughs> Now that you, that's funny because everybody uses my phone number because I've had it the longest, you know, and um, so anybody says anything about the house or anything, say you know, call mom's cell. But I don't know my husband's cell, and he went where one place where we go and get specialty dog food for our dogs. They eat better than we do. Um, so anyway, to get the coupon, the discount, my husband used his phone. I don't know what that is. And you have to tell them the phone number to get the discount. So I have to pull out my phone 
so needless to say, I don't go there very often. I mean, you know. Well, it's kind of funny. I was doing, <laughs> I'm helping somebody with an audit and we were discussing the audit and going over the results and stuff. And, and I said, I said, well, hold on, let me look up that code. And, you know, I, I get out my book. I was like, my book's over here. Let me, you know, I'm flipping it. She's like, you use a book? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I just plug it in the computer. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I have to, I have to use a book for this job. So, I mean, it's just what I am very familiar with and very comfortable with. And I know a lot of people love encoders and the electronics, but I still go back to that book. The, I do too. What's funny is I haven't had a CPT or an ICD-10 code book in probably until you nine took the years. Course. Until I took your course and then I had to go out and <laughs> buy myself a book. And in fact, I don't even have my book any longer. I did the program y'all gave me to go through and mark the it band. all up. Yeah. And then I heard somebody was really having trouble struggling to get ready for the test. And I told her, give me your phone, give me your address. And I went to UPS and shipped it to her. And I told her, now, after you take the test, I would like to have that back because I spent hundreds of hours, it seemed like, <laughs> yeah, going yeah. through and marking it up. And uh, hopefully she'll do good on the test. I don't know. She was somewhere in Kentucky. I don't even remember who it is now. Oh, uh, my. We we want to know how she did. So let us know. <laughs> you, you but I've sung her. praises to CCO ever since I... I took your course and I passed the test on my first try. Uh, That's so, not any that was, blessing to me, but it was from you guys. Okay. I have to tell you, Don, like he said before, he's been doing this a long time. He knows all of this stuff about the coding and everything. However, he'd never gotten a coding credential. He has other credentials, you know, and, and it came about that it, he needed to get the credentials so he could do some extra stuff with CEUs. And, and so he, he took it and I think he was a little nervous, but I was like, you probably got no more about this than, <laughs> than most people. And, and <laughs> as much as I knew and taking the test itself didn't teach me anything. Preparing for the test with your course, I became a much better coder and biller. Cause Did I want to say something. Oh, good. Coders, there, there's some people that says I'm a purist coder. No, not if you're going to do a good job for your client. Mm -hmm. You need to know the billing rules also. And mm -hmm. the same way with a biller needs to know the coding. Yes. Someone who says I'm just a coder only. I don't know anything about billing. I don't care about billing. I'm a purist. Excuse the expression, but that's horse, horse hockey. <laughs> yeah. okay? Something you're going to slip in in a stock yard. You're not doing a good job unless you know some of both. Yeah, the, I think we're going to get along real well, Don, because yeah, <laughs> I mean, this thing. is billing and coding. Yes, I was just telling somebody today that, you know, you're a very well-rounded employee with that knowledge of knowing both billing and coding. You can look at it from every angle. You you know that, oh, Aetna doesn't like this, but United Healthcare does. And, you know, it's just kind of the knowing where the rules are, how to find them, you can be a much more efficient coder as well. So, yeah, I, yeah. I think they really go one and one, hand in hand, yeah. Well, when I was in Houston at their symposium here a few months ago, one of the ladies that got up and spoke and she had done some billing, she, you know, and then she went back doing coding and she was talking about how it saved time because she knew exactly like what you said. She knew Medicare wouldn't allow this or Medicare wanted that or, or you know, uh, UHC required this. So it saved time because she could just fix it before it hit the billers and the billers had to go back and, and do something about it. Um, now, it is true. There are people that will say, oh, I only do one or the other. But, you know, I joke about not in, you know, liking billing and stuff. I still did it and I still know it. <laughs> and I did a year working in a hospital with billing and, you know, and it was fine. It's just that, you know, I was telling somebody, it's like saying ice cream. We all love ice cream. Some of us like strawberry the best and some of us like chocolate. Now, if somebody's going to offer you ice cream and it's chocolate, but strawberry is your favorite, but they don't have any, you can still eat the chocolate. You know? <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it's 
we have to know it's all ice cream and uh, it doesn't matter what type of coding you're doing, whether you're doing risk adjustment, the pro fee, specialty work. If you don't know the aspects of billing, you're totally lost. You know, you're, you're going to struggle. It, and that's another thing, too, I think, if you don't know the why, why do we do something the way we do? Why do we put that modifier on there? Why do you not, you know, why is there an NCCI edit? Well, because when you do this procedure and then you do this procedure, it's really, you know, it's just one way to get to another procedure. It's still really the same procedure. So they're not going to pay you for both, you know, so therefore you're not allowed to bill them together. Or yes, you commonly could do these together, but you better let us know why with a modifier, you know, and, and so uh, it's telling the story, you know, and but if you don't understand that when you get out there and try to code, you know, and then you're going to end up with with notes like mine over here saying that, no, you can't code that with that because that's, you know, <laughs> got the whole sticky board in front of you. In your oh, I got it. And and we have no uh, tax in the house. And uh, if you use regular tape, it doesn't work. So my husband found this in the garage or something yellow duct tape so all of my notes are yellow duct taped on the wall for why don't you just things. write your note on the yellow duct tape well you realize of course this could mean that she's got her ducks in a row <laughs> <laughs> you're right and this oh, matches yeah. my car right my little <laughs> yellow camaro i'm glad he got yellow duct tape and i have little pieces but you know um it doesn't matter if you're, like I said, what type of coding you're doing or if you're billing for somebody. I know when we worked, when I was working at the hospital, they had it divided up to where, you know, I took Medicaid, but I had one type of Medicaid and there were like three or four HMOs at that time for the state, you know, so I had one, another lady had a different Medicare HMO, but I did Blue Cross Blue Shield and another person did UHC and somebody, you know, did Medicare and that's all she did, you know, and so you you have to know how to be multifaceted, I think. Talking about getting you know, a job. Too. I think a lot of time we find people trying to do things the same way they've always done them. And it's kind of like the man who walks in his kitchen and sees his wife cooking and tomorrow being Thanksgiving and I'm cooking a ham and a turkey in here. Um, it's kind of appropriate. So the guy sees his wife taking the ham and cuts the end off the ham and puts the ham in the pan, sticks the pan in the oven and says, honey, why'd you cut the end off the ham? And she said, well, my mama taught me how to cook, so that's how I do it. And so he then he asked his mother-in-law the next day, the holiday, so he asked his mother-in-law that day, why do you cut the end off your ham? And the mother-in-law says, well, my mama taught me how to cook, and that's how she taught me. And this fellow's like a dog with a bone he won't let go. So he then calls, gets on the phone and calls his wife's grandma in Nebraska and says, Granny, when you're cutting ham, why do you cut the end of it off? And she kind of laughs and says, you know, I haven't done that since 1962 when Papa bought me the bigger cookware. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> I was and sitting here yeah. thinking it's probably because it didn't fit in the pan. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> and so how many of us are doing things today a certain way because grandma's pan was too small? That's right. You've got to That's be creative right. and you have to ask why. Like she was saying a moment ago right here, you got to ask why. These two ladies over here, they know what they're talking about whenever they're saying ask why. Because if you don't know why, you don't ask why, you're going to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Mm -hmm. And then, and it's even like when you're training a child to do something, you know, you know, if it's one thing for somebody to tell you to do it, it's another for them to explain why you do what you do, and then it sticks in the old crawl. That's well, there was, you know, when I worked for a billing company, it was, um, you know, okay, you have a one and a half percent error rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, what were those errors of one and a half percent? So I... Yeah, can get down to a half a percent or zero percent. You know, I want to bring it down. So yeah, if you don't tell, you know, so a lot of times we actually had to go back and and correct our own errors, and that way we're like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, that one. That's a you know, we're within sixty one days for podiatry care for this Medicare patient. Okay, got it. You know, so that's why it didn't get paid or something like that. So I didn't check the date. Um, you know, knowing. 
you, you can't learn anything. So at my job that, you know, that I was just at, they're like, okay, well, I want you to train these people. And I said, well, but you have to, I ha you know, you can't have the errors always be corrected by somebody who's not That's coding. Right. Because, mm -hmm. okay, we have the two girls who code, and then we have one person who, like you said, Alicia, she handles the Cigna, the United Healthcare, the Aetna. Mm -hmm. We have somebody else who handles Medicare and Blue Cross, and some, you know, some somebody else does work comp and auto. And it's like, but if I didn't tell this person up here, you need to stop putting the 25 modifier on an E&M when you don't have any pr procedure along with it, <laughs> or don't put the 59 modifier on the 99213, they're not going to know to stop doing it because somebody else is correcting that error for them, which unfortunately is creating more work for somebody else on the back end because it somehow went through the edits and didn't get caught and, you know, uh, or whether they hand push somebody else who sends them just pushes it out because they didn't know it's not supposed to have a modifier on it or something. So yeah, we gotta if you can't correct it at the first source. It's yeah. And it can be uh, overwhelming, got, especially to the coder right now who doesn't really know the boat billing and there, it can be all overwhelming to them. It can be scary. Um, you know, it's kind of like the, the, the traveling preacher that was going from town to town and he had set up a tent and on Saturday night, the bigger signs all around would say this Saturday night, been having a revival right here outside of town on the east side of town, come on out. Well, on a, Town after town, he was filling up the tent. And then one town he came to there. In fact, I think it was down there by San Angelo, Texas. And he came to there on a Saturday night and they got all set up and nobody came around at seven o'clock. He's sitting there looking at an empty, empty tent. And then finally, one about five minutes after seven, one, one cowboy rides up and gets off his horse and walks in there and sits down there on the front uh, pew right there. It was really a log, but we'll call it a pew. It's, her husband's a pastor. She would appreciate this, you know. <laughs> and looks up at the preacher standing there, and the preacher says, well, cowboy, I'm not sure what to do because normally I have a tent full of folks, but you're the only one here. And the cowboy sitting there chewing on a blade of grass looks at him and says, you know, preacher, I ain't book learned, but it seemed to me like if I'd gone out to feed my cattle and one cow showed up, I'd feed the cow. <laughs> well, that made sense to him. So he gets up and preaches a 25, 35, 40 minute West sermon. It was a good hellfire damnation sermon. Just really laid it on him. And then he looked at the cowboy and said, well, you know, cowboy, what do you think? And the cowboy looks at him, still chewing on a blade of grass and says, well, like I told you, I ain't book learned, but if I'd gone out to feed my cattle and one cow showed up, I'd feed the cow, but I don't think I'd dump the whole load on the one. <laughs> yeah. that's a good one i'll go tell him well, that one we, sometimes it might feel like we're just dumping the whole load on you by throwing out all this information about ncci and modifiers and global fee periods and, if you like that. and yeah. get it right There's a reason for it. we got a question out of linkedin renee says so then if mckesson isn't paying 36415 then how do you suggest we get paid for it you can't, you fire your clearinghouse. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. That clearinghouse, you are the customer. If you sit there and say, I want you to clear my claims and do it, but you're using the edits that are not fair, you either switch over to NCCI or I switch it. Good fire idea. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Okay. That's, that's simple and straightforward advice. Um, yes, ma'am. I was going to, uh, I kept thinking, when, and whenever I do audits or anything, uh, I have a simple spreadsheet that I create uh, off Excel, you know, where I have who the provider is, the encounter number, because nobody's a name, the date of service, and then um, you can either put the codes or it's all internal or something, but any comments, and then who's going to do the auditing, and then comments for them. And so that when the person comes back, and looks at their audit and they say okay this particular encounter i got everything right this particular encounter mm, i missed this I, I left this modifier off and then they can go back and reference that again and again and again and see okay this is what my auditor said and and um it's just so simple to be able to see your mistakes repeated that's why cco is really big on rationales too I mean, it's it's one thing to be able to pass a test, but usually when we get new students, I'll tell them, you can 
miss everything on a test. But if you read the rationales and you understand what mistake you made, that's all I care about. That's what, what I kind it. of missed about, you know, you take an exam and you don't pass. Like, tell but me I why. Don't tell me I got, you know, 50% in this area, 90% in this area and stuff. But yeah. But there were 10, 15 questions in that area. Which ones? What part? What, yeah. you know, it's like, it's very frustrating. And then you go to take it again and you're like, didn't I already have that question? Now I got, I might have got that one wrong the last time. So yeah, that's the one I got different wrong. answer this time. <laughs> I know. I hey, we got one minute, one minute before we close out. So we'll do, you know, let everybody give closing statements, I guess, because that's what the fancy people do on, on TVs and, and stuff. Um, so no, that's uh, court, Alicia. That's court. Oh, is that what it is? Closing <laughs> That's on Judge Judy, man. Judge Judy. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't get like, well, TV. that's the We're fancy the people. On TV. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So Jennifer, you start, then Don, and then I'll close this out. Okay. Um, I just, if you don't know it, figure it out, learn it, look it up. You always have time to learn something new. If NCCI seems odd to you, look it up. Do we got some links? do a little bit of review and see what see if you can learn something new it's really funny i looked you know i pulled up that uh, link to pull it in here and i was reading it earlier as alicia and boyd were talking i'm like wow i just learned something new that i didn't know so <laughs> oh, i forgot to tell them you guys that now. link tell them real quick what that link is it's on the reference the resource page too it is um, a link to a 19 page uh, cms workbook on NCCI edits, explaining everything in detail. If you don't understand NCCI edits, just the columns, what they mean, how to how do you use it, how to interpret it. So. Free thing. Okay, Don. Uh, again, NCCI edits is just one tool to help you make sure you're getting paid properly and not billing incorrectly. It's not worth it to bill incorrectly. Don't do it wrong if you if you can keep from it. If I may, I'm going to be adding uh, in a couple of days uh, the same seminar I taught last night. I recorded it, and it's going to be on my free webinars page at domself.com, uh, so you can watch that one. You won't get a CEU for it if you, because it's a recorded one, but you can still watch it and learn from it if you ever want to, and it's free. And I appreciate these two ladies over here having me here today. We had fun. Yeah. And Lorraine's going to be really upset because I was telling Don before when I had said, wait, we, we could talk to Don. We'll get him to come in. And uh, and uh, he's, she said, well, you just you just let me know when you're going to do it. So because she goes, I want to be on that one for sure. And her computer's messed up and, and it keeps turning itself off or something. And so she's got it over at the geek squad or something. But she'll be really right. disappointed. Well, Whitney wasn't. loved us. She said that you were funny. So <laughs> oh yeah. Today. He's a, Don's yeah. a storyteller. That's the type of people I learn from is that's what I oh, grew yes. up with. Yeah. So that that's that's helpful. Oh, I'm surprised. It's a good thing Boyd's has to stay in the background because uh, he too much yeah, I have testosterone. A, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suspect Don is more like uh, me, uh, like this, and and um, yes. Jennifer definitely has more of an analytical type brain. <laughs> uh, 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 Anne Marie said, "Thank you so much." And also, I noticed that Boyd put the CMS, uh, the outreach and education link there, and it's on the resource uh, uh, resources link there. So uh, again, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot of fun. It's very casual on our Wednesday night uh, lives. So if this is your first time visiting us, then we appreciate it. Uh, uh, we don't always have a guest. A lot of times it's just Jennifer and I, sometimes it's Lorene in here too. And and this is just a, a time for us to be able to ask, uh, kind of give you a topic that we plan to ask questions about and uh, share what we know or show you how to resource it. You can go to our YouTube channel and look at some of the uh, past ones that we've done. We've talked about things like, you know, how to set up your office or how to network, or we even uh, had a guest. Last time we had a guest was uh, Annie from um, uh, Resume. Yeah. Resume, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Project Resume oh, yeah, went yeah. over really, really well. So uh, again, 
thank you for joining us uh, YouTube Facebook and LinkedIn don't forget to like subscribe you can share and let other people know about it just again keep in mind very casual Tuesday nights Don is starting a every Tuesday night webinar so reach out and check out what he's doing his is right after ours so you can get both of them we do student and um, club webinars on Tuesday nights and uh, when we get ready to do some updates and stuff we'll probably be doing some Thursday stuff mm -hmm. Uh, maybe uh, the first of the year or, or launch another course. We have some things in the works in the background. So thank you guys for joining us. And uh, uh, Mrs. G said, thank you. Well, and everybody has said, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. Okay, it's everybody Thanksgiving. gets to spend it with their family. Yes. Yeah. So you got to hear all of my family in the other room, right? I think it's a really nice to have these things, but uh, I have a feeling I'm going to go out there and hug my grandbabies. So thanks, guys. Bye-bye. See ya. Thanks, thanks for coming, Don. You bet. Thank you for having me.